what would you advise to other females? Maybe they haven't applied for film school. Maybe they just want to learn on their own. They're just starting out. What would you advise them on being with a camera and making films? Well, I think an experience that both of us had is that when we were in high school and making our first very rudimentary projects, we were kind of, you know, in a, a bubble. Um, we weren't dealing with the outside world or the industry in any way, and we yeah. had just had our groups of... It's just creativity with your friends. Yeah, we had just groups of female friends that we would take camcorders out, and she shot fantasy stuff, and I shot comedy stuff. And I shot this horrible, horrible movie on a Super 8 camera that we didn't really know what we were doing, so the whole thing is just shot like a play. Like, every scene is just one, <laughs> one long shot and features like horses and people who see their own death and me chewing through the scenery. Um, but yeah, we, we both made stupid film like it. But I think there's that, you know, because you have, you can do that when you're a kid because you're not um, dealing with the real world. And I mm -hmm. think the problem is that that camaraderie um, isn't held through to adulthood. And I think that many women become so concerned with proving that they can make it in a man's world, mm -hmm. so to speak, that they don't connect with other female filmmakers. Yeah, they adult with each other a lot. Yeah, they, they allow themselves to become competitive rather than compatriots of. And I think that the strongest thing you can do as a woman, especially a woman interested in any kind of genre, whether it's comedy or, or horror or action or sci-fi, is find the other women that share your passions and grow with them rather than trying to um, beat them or, you know, it, when you're allowing yourself to be, say, a token um, in a writer's room or in any kind of creative situation, it may seem good at the time because you're getting a lot of resources and the, the myth is that those are not infinite resources, that you can't share those, that if another, say, girl comes into the group, that, you know, it's half as many resources for you and half as many for her, but really it's double. It's not, there's no such thing as like, you know, you can only have this many women in a group or they can only have this much female in influence in a group. It just doesn't work that way. And I think that more girls need to, um, really just band together and do what they want to do. So is there like a bullet list, you know, one, two, three, four, five, if you were going to tell somebody who's going to come, maybe they're starting film school tomorrow, mm -hmm. just, just of, of how to carry yourself or what to fight and what not to fight, what, you know, because the thing is if you complain, you might be perceived in a certain way or, you know, just, just sort of a checklist. I feel, um, in general, with this and in general, is that when you're offended, it, there's a power in it, but not if you do it all the time. So like, spend that wisely. If you just seem like a person who is offended all the time, you, people won't take you seriously. So instead of like, when people say dumb shit to you or, or do dumb things, learn how to counter it and like win, get the upper hand in those situations, as opposed to being like, uh, that's offensive, you know, you're hurting my feelings. Because when you show vulnerability, people will eat you. Um, Hollywood is a, it's a vicious town. I grew up here, but you know, LA is vicious. And if you like show that you are weak, people will push you and people will not let you get the things done that you want to get done. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the, the hardest things is when you are rejected, when somebody doesn't want to work with you and you kind of know it's for a not legit reason, you know, don't fight it. Mm -hmm. Don't try to prove because they already are coming into this with a prejudice and you're probably not going to win. You know, don't expend your efforts trying to prove yourself to a group of people that isn't interested in working with you or belittles you or doesn't work with women, you know, go off and make your own project because, you know, in a lot of ways, trying to prove yourself to people who are not interested in you is wasting your effort and it's an excuse not to just go out and make something on your own. And I think that, you know, it can be hard to make something on your own, but you just need to find the people who uh, share your interests. 
find the people that you think are talented, you know, pad your group with people that are confident and that you guys can play off each other's humor or, you know, do a writing group and just grow together. And there's no reason to, ch so you know, try to force the, the square peg into the round hole situation, you know, if, if you're not gelling, there's no reason to push it. Yeah, like, learn to read people. Um, in New York, people will tell you to fuck off. In LA, they will tell you that they'll do lunch later with you. You know, it's, you know, we'll call you later. Like, learn to read people, learn to understand when people actually don't like you and don't want to work with you, and when people do. Get good at those kind of life skills and learn how to like interact with human beings because you get a lot farther if you're trying to get a film made, if you're trying to get people to work on your film, whatever it is, if you have a good understanding of people. Yeah, and I think that many women um, are sort of raised to it's think that up, they need permission and so parting, you know, trying to work with a group and not being accepted by them, they're continuously seeking their permission, trying to do what that group needs them to do in order to fit in. And the reality is, like, don't do that. Just don't, you don't have to do your own group. thing because Just that's like. what every guy is doing. They're not seeking permission from other people to, you know, get an airsoft gun and go run around on the streets and make it a little action movie. You know, that's something that you can do too. And I think that that's the most important thing, is don't let somebody else hold you back. And don't let somebody else be the excuse as to why you are not creating what you want to be creating. Going back to something that you both touched on in yeah. terms of letting your vulnerability show, don't you think it helps to sometimes play dumb, and especially if you're smart, that it, it's almost hard for you to hold back that sort of that trigger to like call people out on something? and. It almost helps sometimes to play dumb. You said to kind of choose your battles. You should choose your battles. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and also that like when someone does something to me that I'm used to, I deal with a lot of people saying like things that 10 years ago I would have found like horribly, horribly offensive. And instead of being hurt by those things, I just throw it back at them. So if somebody is like ignorant um, or asking me questions that like are not appropriate and they shouldn't be asking me, I just, ask them stupid questions or I throw it back at them like being legitimately offended you save that for really important shit <laughs> you know you save that for the like this thing that you did is really really not okay not this offended me but like you're doing something wrong and you shouldn't be doing that I'm talking too much and I'm not making any sense. No, no, no. Save it for the, the letter to the White House. Yeah, yeah but don't. Exactly. <laughs> but don't, don't, yeah. No, I, I hear you. I think it's hard for Yeah, you don't want to be the, the feminist crying You don't want to be the bitch. It's like yeah. when you're a guy, you can get angry, and that's okay. But as a woman, when you get angry, oh my God, you're a bitch. Um, particularly as like a woman AD, I can't yell at people because then I'm a harpy. I have to control them in like a calm way because if I'm screaming at people, like other than just like quiet on set, then I'm raising my voice because I want to be heard. But if I come off as yelling, then people don't respect me, and that's something that women have to wor worry about that I don't think men do in the same way. Like the constant avoidance of being a bitch.